Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software Example Child Tax Credit and Other Dependent Credit Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 Lacert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the forms and schedules, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the son on the books as a dependent. Child tax credit then checked off. 60000 for the wages. We've got the standard deduction, 12550 That gets us to the 47 450 for the taxable income mirroring that over here on the equation 60,000 income 12,550 47 450 and then we've got the tax calculated on page number two relying on the software for that 6,193 notice that nothing's really being impacted with regards to the dependent at this point because it's being taken place mainly in the form of a credit which is showing up down below here with the line 28 the refundable tax credit because we have the qualifying child so we're going to we're going to run a few scenarios with that focusing in on form uh, 88 or schedule 8812 credits for qualifying children and other dependents will run a couple different scenarios so first we got we've got two parts of this that you need to think about one is calculating the credit and then two taking it and that's going to be in part uh, part 1a usually and then for most people part 2b takes into consideration the the amount of the prepayment that we should have received and gotten a letter about that's letter 6419 so once we have the credit calculated we subtract the prepayment which for most people would be half of the credit if they got the calculation correct although we can think of many different areas where there could be an issue with that but that would be the general rule so up top right now we've got our income 60,000 that's our AGI line four we've got the one the one qualifying child and that child is a uh, under six so that's why we have the one here this is our worksheet which I won't go into detail we actually put this together in a prior presentation but you can see the phase outs so these are the phase outs for uh, the married filing joint qualified widow head of household and others and so we're single right now so if our income goes above that 75,000 that's when you can see this phase out taking place so we don't have that at this point so we got the full 3,600 of the credit and then if I go down uh, below we we then have the other uh, dependent that would take into consideration we have another phase out if the income was pretty high uh, 200,000 here that could take place and then finally we get basically the credit of the 3,600 which we would then have to subtract out the prepayment and if everything went properly you would think it would be half of that amount which would then be reported on down below here so let's say on the letter 6419 we got 1,800 and there was one uh, child on it and so if I go back on over you would expect 1,800 that leaves us the other half that we would get to then report that then flows into the form 1040 page number two and so that's going to be the benefit we get down here if we're going to mirror that on our tax equation you might not actually do a whole schedule like we did to kind of calculate this you might just kind of rely on the software but we, we put a schedule in so we're going to say that we had one we had one qualifying child under six and and then this whole calculation is taking place we've got our our phase out or our limit here for all other filers there's our phase out here at the 75 and so we're picking that up and so if we follow this all the way down we've got the 1800 that's pulling in to page one of the form 1040 so there's there's the amount of the one eight for the amount that's still owed four three nine three so that would be the 4472 because I got a $79 penalty, 79-4472-4472. So that would be the general scenario there. Let's go back to the 8812. Now let's say our income goes above the 60000 or above the 75000 which is the phase out. So if I go back on over here and I say, okay, what if my income was, let's say, let's say 90 thousand so it's well within the phase out area and I go back on over now I can see the top half I've got the I've got the 90,000 
And so this calculation is the same, but now I've got this phase out problem because I went over the 75,000. So it phased it down to 2,850. So now I got the 2,850. Now, if my income was lower last year, then you would expect that the IRS wouldn't, wouldn't have properly calculated the, the phase out for the current year. And so that I might still have the 1,800 that, that, was the prepayment reported on letter 6419 so it wouldn't exactly be half then and i get the 1050 that would be pulling in to the 1040 and so it pulls into the 1040 here page number two i can mirror that over here in our worksheet because we did a fancy worksheet calculation if i change this to 90,000, it should then pick up i believe everything over here so now we're at the 1050 that would be pulling in to page one of uh, the form 1040. So there's there's the general kind of scenario and the phase out. We, we have similar kind of phase outs that would take place if, of course, if married, for example. And so you've got to make sure that you've, you're reporting properly the information from the letter 6419 when you're filing married, which can be a little bit difficult because you're probably both going to get the form 6419. So if I add a married here and we say that they got married, single to married filing joint. So now I'm going to go back on over and we're going to take a look at the 8812. So now we've got the 90,000. We still got the 3,600 here for the one child for both of them now. So now the phase out isn't taking place because now we're, we're, we're at the phase out line item of 150,000. So we're back to taking the 3,600. If we got on our letter 6419, which two of us would have gotten the letter, then that the amount we, we got was 1,800 back to half. And there would be our calculation. If we mirrored that on our little worksheet over here, we'd have to change these numbers. I'd have to say this one is now equal to the married filing joint number. And this is now equal to the married filing joint number. And that should get us back to the 1008, which should be flowing into the page one here. Now, of course, if our income goes over the threshold for married filing joint, which we saw was, was uh, the threshold here for married filing joint was 150. So let's say we went up to 160,000 on the income. Let's say it's 165,000. That's way too much, 165,000. Not a million, that's way over. We wouldn't get anything. So then we're gonna say it's 165. Now it's been phased out because we, we went over the threshold, 165. And if I go down back down here, we would expect maybe if my income was lower last year that on the letter 6419, they didn't actually take half because they didn't know about the phase out. The phase out's gonna mess them up. And that's why we get to the 1050 again and it starts to phase out. So you can get a general idea of the phase out. If I mirrored that on our payment down below, we're gonna say that they said 165, I said. Well, let's just keep it at that. I won't do it every time here. So that's the general idea there. Then let's add a level of complication. Let's go back to the first tab. Let's bring it back then to the single filer, single filer, let's bring the wages back to 60,000, but let's add another dependent. So now we're gonna say two dependents. The first one is under six, and then the second one we're gonna say is between six and 18. So if I go back to the forms now, I'm gonna say, okay, the now I've got these two people, two dependents, two children, both child tax credits, but one's qualifying for the larger child tax credit than the other. So if I go then to the 8812, there's the 60,000. We're getting the full amount here because well, the maximum of the one child at the 3,600, the other child at the 3,000 due to the different ages, even though they're both qualifying children, you would think then through 3,600 plus the 3,000 that on form the letter 6419, I would have gotten half of that if they got it correct, which would be the 3,300. So if I go back down, we're going to say, okay, there's that. You would think that down here on the letter, I would have gotten not 1,800,
but I would have gotten, you would think, 3300, half of that for the two children that are involved already, which would leave us then with the 3,900 that we would still be able to be picking up. And if I go back on over to the 1040, then on page two, that would be the benefit that we would be uh, getting recorded down here, kind of similar to where the payment kind of calculations are at. So there's that scenario. Let's go ahead and add another one. Let's say that we had a dependent on the books that was not a qualifying child, but an other dependent uh, item. So I'm going to go back on over and say dependents. And let's say that we had a third one here that wasn't a qualifying child forms. Now I've got my form 1040. We've got two children, one under six, one between six and 18, and then another dependent, the other dependent for the other credit, not the child tax credit, going to the 8812. Now we've got these two calculating at the 7,002, and then we've got the 500 that's calculated on the other credit down below. You would expect then that the form, the form 6419 has not changed because they didn't send out a prepayment for the other dependent. It's not like we got another 250, $250 because they estimated that $500 credit. No, but you still could have a phase out kind of thing here. So now we've got the 3,900 after we put in the, the, the letter 6419. That flows over to the form 1040 in a little bit more confusing way because the 500 is up here and the non-refundable component because the whole thing is basically non-refundable for that credit, meaning it can't take you below zero. That's why you got to put it up here. And then down here, all of the child tax credit is basically refundable unless you've got some unusual circumstances, which we might take a look at in a second. So that's the next scenario. Now, you could have a situation where they got the estimate completely wrong. So let's just think about that. We could say, okay, well, what if, what if for example, I don't have any any dependents in the current time period we're going to say that they're not here but the government sent me a, a letter 6419 because they gave me prepayments incorrectly okay so now we're going to say okay well if that happened then we're going to say we don't have any dependents on page one of the 1040 but last year let's say we had a dependent on the form 1040 and therefore the government tried to send out prepayments based on that dependent, they messed up on it. You would think that we would have to pay it back unless they give you some kind of exception. So then if I go to, to the 8819, I still got this schedule here because I got the prepayment. So I didn't actually get any credit calculation. There is no actual credit because I don't have anybody on the form. But then down here, I'm saying that they gave us, let's say that they gave us half of what the credit would be. Let's say they gave us, let's say they gave us, um, let's say 1,800 and for one child, that's what was reported on the letter 6419. So if I go back on over, now I've got the 1,800 that they already gave us when I, I don't qualify for the credit. So if I jump back to page number three, then this is going to, this is going to be a calculation of the possible ability to have what they're calling repayment protection. So they kind of made an error on it and they didn't really make an error. They estimated it on the numbers that are different or changed. So you can see that they calculated uh, 2000 uh, of it here that you might be able to get to get back. So they're only charging the 800 after you do the calculation here. So in other words, you would think that the full amount of the 1,800, you'd kind of have to increase your liability by that. But after this, after this, it's 800, which is flowing in to the line two or schedule two, where we see it on page two of schedule two. And this is the additional tax that's going to have to be added because they gave you that payment. We go to the 1040 and then I go to page two and now we've got the added tax. This is increasing the tax. Now, if I lowered my income a bit, if I go back on over and I said that this was like, let's say 40,000, and then I go back on over and we go back down to the 8812 and say page number three. So now the whole thing's basically wiped out because it's up to basically that 2000. So we've got that threshold and you, <laughs> you knew this was gonna happen basically from the start, right? They said, well, if, 
if they if they give you the prepayment incorrectly, then they were telling you, well, you should tell the IRS so that you don't have to pay it back uh, at the tax time. But you knew that they were going <laughs> to. But they basically now have this thing. If you're under the threshold, then you might not have to pay it back would be the the item here, which again was fairly predictable that that was going to happen. But it kind of incentivizes people to to, you know, not say don't give me the money when you're not going to. But in any case, those are the general scenarios uh, that that you can have. And so then uh, the, the more unusual scenario, let's go back on over and let's add a dependent back. So let's add uh, this first dependent back in place going back to the forms. So now we got more of the general scenario where we've got that 3600 on the credit and let's say then down here on box 13 that we don't check either of these items and so box 13 could change things uh, a lot so that would say check all boxes that apply to you uh, or your spouse if married filing jointly check here if you or uh, your spouse if married filing jointly had a principal place of abode in the united states for more than half of 2021 that's most people generally in the united states filing the tax return B, check here if you or your spouse, if married, filing jointly, were bona fide resident of Puerto Rico. Now, if neither of those apply, then you wouldn't check off that box. So I'm going to say don't check that box. And then that you'd have a whole, you wouldn't be going then to part B here. You'd have to then go then to part C to continue on with the calculation. And one of the main kind of things that, that happens here is that, uh, is that the credit that you, you might be getting there's going to be a non-refundable and refundable so it looks actually a little bit more like how the credit was calculated in prior years so in other words you've got the child tax credit and credit for the other dependents and then on page two you got part c filers who do not check the box here and then the additional child tax credit that you have to basically uh, be dealing with if you see how this flows through then to the form 1040 you can see then up top on line 19, we've got the non-refundable child tax credit or credit for other dependents at the 1,800, uh, as opposed to it being recorded down down below in the non-refundable kind of section down here that we saw. So that could add to more limitations on the amount of the credit that you could get. So again, a little bit little bit more unusual of a situation, but that's kind of the difference on on that if if that box number 13 is checked or if box 13 is non-checked so that's going to be over here depending on on this one i won't go into that in as much detail because that's more of the unusual circumstance